Ain't it funny how a breeze becomes a storm And the dark turns into light Just a moment and it all goes right away so today I'm really excited to welcome someone to my channel who I've followed the musical journey for for a very long time. Today I'm joined with Mark from Kovic and he's here to tell me a little bit about his music so you can find out a bit more about him. Mark, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Um, my name is Mark Kovic. I have a music project called Kovic and I'm lucky to be supported by one of the greatest music fans of all time, Tracy. And uh, I'm, I've been looking forward to this. I'm, I'm happy to be here. So let's let's dive in. I hear you're going to ask me some questions. I hope they're not too difficult. Uh, I've got my calculator ready, so let's do it. <laughs> Glad to have you on my channel. Um, so what got you into music? Um, I loved playing the drums when I was a kid. Uh, I remember watching Dave Grohl smash a drum kit to Smells Like Teen Spirit from Nirvana. Learned the drums, the rest is history. Learned piano and uh, fell in love with songwriting. Sounds good. Um, so what's been your favourite thing about creating music? I think learning all the time. I've got one of those minds that really enjoys learning and music is something that you can never master. You just uh, practice it, you play stuff and whether it is becoming better at working rhythm sections and drums and bass or whether it is working on becoming a better lyricist or whether it is working on vocal performances, it's never ending. So for me, it's just a, it's just a, a life passion. I don't think it's ever going to end. Cool. Um, so you started working on your second album and using Patreon as part of the A&R process uh, with your fans. How do you feel this has impacted the creation of the second album? It impacted the creation of the second album in a way that I didn't anticipate, because whenever you see Patreon, um, there's a couple of things that spring to mind. It's a subscription based service. It's a way for artists to, to bring in income. And that seems to be what people uh, look at Patreon as. and. Um, the weirdest thing happened when I started doing it, I realized this beautiful pressure that Patreon had on me because the idea was I was going to write songs. I was going to show people demos that I would never, ever let see the light, light of day. I was going to just bear all. And in this kind of quite forceful process where I had a group of people waiting for the work, um, it was beautiful. It couldn't have been timed better through lockdown. It kept me very focused. It kept me very uh prepared to um kind of prepared to bear all if that makes sense because when it comes to demos and basic constructions of songs you never want to show people stuff until it's perfect this was not that this was showing people the bare bone songs and being ready to take on that input from a number of people and um being to some extent beholden to a to a higher power i know that sounds really religious doesn't it but like to be beholden to a higher power and a group of people that are really want the best for you it's not like you're beholden to a record label or an a and r person it, these people like you you included you just want the best for the artist and that makes me work 10 times harder uh this album would not be anything um without the, pr the process that I've had through uh, through Corona. So thank you and thank everyone else for, for it. It's been killer. Yeah, it's been great to be part of the Patreon site. I feel like it's become like a little family as well. <laughs> it's been so much more than I ever anticipated it to be. Good. Um, so what's your favorite song you've written and why? Well, that kind of moves on from what we were doing in Patreon. One time I did an experiment where I put the cameras on in studio and I tried to write a song from scratch. Uh, it was a really daunting process. It was full of mistakes and um, horrible, awkward moments. But out of that session came a song called Playing With Fire. That is the now the, the album name and the track that is going to be the first one on it. Um, it is it's a beautiful thing. That's my favorite one by far. I think for some reason that song just came out of that whole Patreon process. And uh, I'm really happy to be to be in a position to have a song like that on the record. So that's that's the one. That's my one. Definitely. Um, so you've recently wrote and produced your uh, new song, Wake Up Tomorrow, which has been dedicated to the key workers. What was the experience like for you? What was the experience in making the song or the experience of lockdown? That's, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, the song. <laughs> I'll go with that the experience for the song was weird because r writing music for me is like i guess why some people have a diary and it's funny when i look back at the songs i've written i realize that they really depict moments in my life and wake up tomorrow depicts lockdown and uh, my partner is a doctor 
I secondhand was a part of some pretty horrible uh, things that she had to go through and um, was very aware of what key workers did for all the key workers who are listening. Um, I know, what's the best way of putting this? For the key workers listening, I know that at some point in your career, you had to sit and uh, in a room and think on your own and go, am I going to willingly put myself in front of a virus where no one really knows what the danger is and fundamentally risk my life it's all well and good now looking back and going out oh, it kind of you know quote unquote wasn't as bad as we thought but the key workers um all around the world they are they are heroes to me and and what they put themselves through and what they willingly dived dived headfirst into for the sake of others so uh writing that song was a therapy um and getting my thoughts out about what i felt about those people that's good. Um, so you had the fir your first airplay of Wake Up Tomorrow on BBC Radio 2. What was it like to hear your song played um, on such a well-known radio platform? You never get used to it. Never get used to it. It was a beautiful thing. And um, it's hard to put in words how it feels. You know, when, when a song goes out to that many people on a station like BBC Radio 2, which is the biggest station in the UK, it just makes you feel in a good way so small it's like you've written this song and now it's now it's everyone else's and and everyone and everyone else takes it and it becomes part of their story and uh yeah it's really it's really a cool thing i'll never get used to it yeah when you said it had been on there i went back and listened to it <laughs> just so i could yeah. play it on there <laughs> it's mad isn't it <laughs> yeah um, so if you could perform at any venue in the world where would it be and why if i could perform at any venue in the world, I would probably choose this place called Red Rocks. Uh, I want to say it's out in California. Uh, it just looks amazing. It's, it's this natural kind of auditorium built in, in rocks and it's out in where the weather's beautiful. And uh, yeah, I've always loved that venue. I want to go play there one day. Well, I'm sure you'll make it there. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So what's been your favourite memory from a tour you've been on and why? Favourite memory on a tour I've been on was actually with you. Uh, we went on a tour before lockdown and we we played the first 1000 cap venue in london it was islington and you came backstage with me and we we spent some time just soaking up that day because obviously you you've been supporting my music uh, since doing these tiny little venues where where barely anyone would turn up and um that was a real moment for me that was the last show that i've played uh, so if as i look back that was a real magic moment and um and I, and I just cannot wait. It makes me, as I'm talking now, it just makes me want to go on tour again. So, so yeah, uh, that would be the one. Islington Assembly Hall in London. Um, that was the one. Yeah, I remember that moment with talk with all the lights. I remember stepping to the side and seeing that. That's something that'll stick with me for a long time. Beautiful, isn't it? And and especially because you've been such a key part of building it, you know, because it's, it's different, isn't it? It's not like you're a typical... Um, it's not like you're the average supporter is probably the best way of putting it. It's like you, you helped me put the day together. You were helping running to, to, you know, you, you offered to get food for the team. You're looking after everyone. And I think because you've got so much of your foundation built in the project. Yeah. It must be cool to sit side stage and look out at the crowd. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's good. Good memories. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so how, how do you feel that the internet has impacted uh, the music business? That's something I feel like I could talk a lot about. So I'll try and compress, compress my answers. The internet um, has, has destroyed and beautifully reconstructed the music industry. Uh, I have been in music long enough to have seen the catastrophe of uh, the kind of doomsday of the MP3 moment where everything just went completely tits up. And now to see, how, you know, the strength of streaming and the mixed opinions on that now to see the world of nfts developing and to see all of these opportunities that are putting power back in creators hands there's too much to say about it it's it's been a complete roller coaster ride so i've actually been a big fan of trying to stay ahead on the cutting edge and uh and just uh make a career out of it despite the waves piece of advice you've been given in your music career the best piece of advice that I've been given in my music career would be from, from a, my Dutch partner. So the translation isn't perfect, but it went along the lines of yes is okay. No is okay. And maybe you're dead. And the, and the idea of this was 
make a wrong decision and adjust. Don't ever sit in a, oh, yes, maybe, no, kind of. In music and probably in life, the moment you make a solid decision, you at least go in a direction and you can adjust your behavior. And I did spend a few years of my life probably in maybe land. And maybe land is the most dangerous thing, the most dangerous place you can ever be in. So that's probably a pretty deep one. That's my best bit of advice, I think. And finally, what's next for you? God, we, we got through those questions quick, didn't we? Is that the last one? Okay, so what's next for me? Um, I'm continuing the work with Patreon, as you know. You know, we just come out for an A&R session. Um, we're on the last stretch of getting the album together. And although we've only dropped one single in the public, as you know, we have most of the album done behind the scenes. So the plan for me really is to expand this operation that we've got going on. So that means uh, not just expanding the A&R team, but it means expanding the teams that are operating in different nations. Um, we've got a fairly reasonable foothold in the UK. We're doing reasonable numbers when it comes to touring and streaming. And I think now is the time where we start to open into new markets. We're going into Germany quite a lot. We're just starting to play around in the United States, which is obviously such a huge market. Uh, so we've got to kind of be careful how we approach it. And um, and just having fun making music and and continuing to try and keep the, keep the momentum up. So um, busy times, a lot of fun times ahead. And uh, doing things like this, I guess, is just all part of the process. Yeah, I definitely can't see, uh, wait to see what the future holds for you. It's going to be fun and you're going to be right there with me. So it's going to be a beautiful day. <laughs> a massive thank you, Mark, for joining me on my channel. It's been great to chat with you. If anyone would like to check out Kovic's music, I'll leave all the links in the description below. But thanks very much, Mark. Anytime. See you next time. And I don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow.